There are 30 different hybrid electric vehicles from a dozen car makers on the road right now, and several more are on the way. So conventional hybrids will continue to expand their clean reach. But plug-in hybrids could offer another big step up in terms of fuel economy. A larger rechargeable battery pack allows extended electric-only operation before the gas engine ever kicks in, which may push average plug-in hybrid fuel economy over 100 miles per gallon. The current administration has a goal of 1 million plug-in hybrid and electric vehicles on American roads by 2015. Whether that happens or not will depend more on consumer demand than vehicle availability. So the federal government is offering up to $7,500 in tax credits to buyers of plug-in and full electric vehicles. Toyota, Ford and others have shown factory plug-in prototypes, but Bose won't see production before 2012. However, two eagerly awaited new plug-in vehicles, the Chevrolet Volt and Fisker Karma, are coming sooner than that. The $41,000 Volt promises up to 40 miles of electric-only range, plus an additional 300 miles using its gasoline engine-driven generator to power the electric motor that propels the car. The $88,000 Fisker Karma luxury sports sedan uses a similar drive system with optional rooftop solar panels to trickle charge the batteries or cool the interior when it's parked. More than a few manufacturers are leapfrogging hybrid technology altogether though and focusing their resources on pure electric vehicles. Mini, Smart, Mitsubishi and Think are among those who have running electric only vehicles nearly ready for America. The Tesla Roadster is already here though and more than 1,200 of the tiny two-seaters have been sold. With an operational range routinely exceeding 200 miles, the Tesla is efficient enough for real-world operation, although its lack of cargo space and six-figure price tag hardly qualify it as practical. But the all-electric Nissan LEAF certainly is, with its five-door versatility, range of 100 miles, and more reasonable price tag of $33,600 before tax credits. But in order for plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles to enjoy the same success as conventional hybrids, other things need to develop as well. One critical factor for making these vehicles practical and to eliminate range anxiety is the infrastructure for charging electric vehicles at home and on the road. What we're seeing right now in the market is the government is driving the installation of the infrastructure for the charging stations. We're also beginning to see a lot of the public interest in charging stations. Uh, with the charging stations, there's three different levels. There's a level one, which is 110 volt, level two, which is up to 240 volt, and a level three quick charger, which is 480 volt. Uh, at the current time, we're seeing the level two generate the most interest. In addition, a coordinated effort is needed to recruit and train charging station installers, technicians to service these high-tech vehicles, and perhaps most importantly, the first responders who may encounter these high-voltage vehicles at future accident scenes. To that end, the U.S. Department of Energy is funding projects like the Advanced Electric Drive Vehicle Education Program. Developed by West Virginia University, it's creating curricula and instructional programs that will allow electric drive vehicles to progress hand in hand with their enabling infrastructures. Advanced electric drive technology is not just pie in the sky hype for some undefined future, but a ready for prime time plug in and play solution that is real now and ready to lead the charge towards truly clean motoring. Thank you.